Hopefully you enjoyed your vacation, um, but we're back to do a little bit of, uh, this will be a quick one on when you have electric and magnetic fields, what's going to actually happen to the uh, object. Um, but one application of magnetic fields is TV screens. So TVs, basically what they do is you have an electron gun which shoots a beam of uh, electrons toward, well, an old scale TV, uh, toward the front, and those beams are deflected by magnets. and the magnets kind of sweep along, kind of show which color it's going to be, what's going to happen along there. But as we've seen, magnetic fields don't accelerate anything. What they do is they deflect it. So inside like a mass spectrometer, if you ever watch CSI, they usually you know, figure out where the killer was by analyzing some piece of sand on it left on a shoe. Um, but what happens, the different materials are pushed along and if they have a charge, they get deflected. And the path is going to be a circle because anytime the force is always perpendicular to the motion, you're going to get circular motion. Um, but depending on the mass, you know, heavier, heavier objects are going to be deflected less, so they'll move farther away. Lighter objects will be moved closer by looking. And then so if you look at where the objects land, you can figure out their mass. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is inside that magnetic field, you know, V cross B, you can actually see from this, that if you use the right hand rule, uh, an object going in that, this path would have to be negative. Let's see if you guys can figure that out. Um, but basically, there's the force on the ion, which is the magnetic force, QVB. I'm going to assume it's perpendicular from the way I've drawn it, so sine of theta is equal to 1. Um, and it's a circular path, so we know when an object's moving in a circular path, the force has to be the centripetal force, mv squared over r. And so if we rearrange those two, set those two forces equal to each other and solve for the radius, the radius of the path's curvature is mv over qb. So it's kind of a, a nice result we can have from, from this type of force. Um, but another way of dealing with these is kind of choosing specific velocities. So here's a cathode ray tube. You have a magnetic and an electric field. And by tuning how strong the electric and how strong the magnetic fields are, you can choose what the, you can figure out what the speed of the charged particles are going to be. Because basically, if we go back, here, let me go back to previous slide real quick. So if these objects are going in a straight line, we know the net force has to be zero. So there's one force, the magnetic force, which will be QVB, assuming it's perpendicular. Then there's the electric force, QE. Now, if the net force is zero, these two forces have to be equal. So QVB has to equal QE. So that means V is going to be equal to E over B. So that's a nice result to have. Um, velocity selectors show up every once in a while in physics problems because it combines electric forces and magnetic forces. Something uh, physics teachers are always happy to do.